Hi students, today let's discuss regarding the other procedure that is bladder irrigation. In the irrigation part, we had already discussed regarding eye irrigation, ear irrigation, as well as nasal irrigation. Today, let's see more about irrigating the bladder. Okay, first of all, the definition. Bladder irrigation is defined as flushing of the urinary bladder with sterile solution. So when we were discussing regarding the definition of irrigation, it means washing out of a body cavity using a stream of liquid or water, isn't it? So in case of bladder irrigation, we are trying to flush out the urinary bladder, that is the body cavity into which we are flushing the solution and through that we can clear out the urinary bladder. That is the definition of urinary bladder irrigation. So this is a simple picture of bladder irrigation. Here is the bladder in which you can see that it, is a, it will be connected with a three-way irrigation catheter and a urinary drainage bag is also connected with this catheter. And through this irrigating catheter, we are connecting the irrigating solution or the tube which is being connected with the irrigating solution through this. Uh, on the basis of this um, Calm, you can irrigate this solution through this line or this uh, through this catheter into the bladder as well as urine can be collected in the drainage bag. Okay, this is just an example of or just a picture of how we can perform. Okay, so in the coming slides, we will be dealing regarding the types of irrigation and the procedure in detail. Okay, so the main purposes of bladder irrigation or for what kind of indications for performing bladder irrigation. First is to clean the bladder from decomposed urine, bacteria, excess of mucus, pus and bladder clots. Okay, so first of all, it can be act as a cleansing method. Okay, so we can clean the bladder to remove the decomposed urine because if the urine is test um, urine stasis occurred within the bladder, it can lead to the urinary tract infection. So we have to remove the decomposed urine as 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 possible and as well as to remove the bacteria from the urine and excess of mucus and pus and bladder clots because following any surgery undergoing any bladder surgery we can perform this bladder irrigation otherwise it may lead to the clot formations in the bladder so to remove that complications you can perform this bladder irrigation and to maintain the patency of the urinary catheter so we are mainly inserting this catheter to drain out the urine sometimes this catheter can be blocked so that the urine can be retained within the bladder. So it may lead to several complications like you may try the infection. So to prevent that complications, you can perform this bladder irrigation so that you can maintain the patency of that catheter. Okay, then to prevent the clot formations in case of bladder surgeries, because after performing this bladder surgeries, there will be more chances to get clot within this bladder. So as the bladder clots within this cavity, we have to remove, remove it, or else it may block this bladder as well as it can lead to the blockage of this urinary bladder. Okay, so that the urine cannot be come out and it can lead to several complications like also in the infection. So to prevent the clot formations after the bladder surgeries, we can perform this procedure. Then to prevent and treat urinary infection because urinary infections, there will be bacteria growth can be seen in the urine. So to wash out this bacteria from the urine, you can perform this procedure. Then to instill medication to urinary bladder. So it is another important purpose of urinary bladder irrigation. We can instill, instill some kind of medication uh, either to decrease the infections or antibacterial or kind of in, uh, medicines that can be instilled into the urinary bladder through this procedure. Okay, so these are the main purposes. To drain the bladder from decomposed and bacteria, to maintain the patency of the urinary bladder, so you make it theater, to prevent the clot formations in case of bladder surgeries and to prevent and treat urinary tract infections and to insert the medications into the urinary bladder. Okay. So, there are mainly two types of urinary catheter or urinary bladder irrigation procedure is there. First is continuous irrigation and intermittent irrigation. It's very, very important when you are learning regarding the bladder irrigation. So, in the coming slides, we will be dealing in detail regarding what is continuous irrigation and what is intermittent irrigation. So, articles. Articles 
required for performing the bad of it is very common for both continuous as well as intermittent irrigation only the method of how we are performing this procedure is different okay so the main article is required to deliver the bladder irrigation into a clean tray containing sterile gloves sterile gloves because we are trying to instill or irrigate the bladder so urinary bladder is considered as a sterile cavity isn't it so if you are trying to irrigate any fluid into this group um, Urinary cavity, it should be performed under proper aseptic techniques so that we have to wear the sterile gloves throughout this procedure. The towel and macular to prevent the soiling of linen and prevent retention catheter. Through this, we are trying to irrigate the solution and drainage tubing and bag. After the irrigation, this urine can be collected in a drainage bag. As the bag fills, we have to remove this or we have to drain out this urine. Then, infusion tubing through this, we are instill or we are irrigating the solution and normal saline through which we can select either uh, normal saline or in kind of antibiotic like ciprofloxacin as per the doctor's order we can perform this blood irrigation so that uh, as per the indications we have to take this necessary solution then kidney that should be needed to collect the Base products and I will stand to hang this infusion tubing when we infusion bodies. We can we need an IV stand. Okay, so these are the main articles to to deliver and a bladder irrigation. First is the procedure. First, we have to check the physician's order and determine the client's current urinary drainage system, monitor the intake and output chart, review the complaints and the signs of previous irrigation. So before going to perform any procedure, we have to check the physician's order through which we can assess that what kind of solution is being used to deliver this bladder irrigation and as well as we have to monitor the intake and output chart. It is very, very important before going to perform a urinary bladder irrigation procedure because it will help you to know about how much urine can has been drained out after this procedure because it will help to know that any forms of retention of urine is happened after this procedure. Okay, as well as you have to Assess the patient's urinary drainage system, whether the patient had any history of UT in the past or whether the patient had a complaint of urinary retention or urinary incontinence. These urinary abnormalities we have to assess before going to perform this procedure. Okay, this assessment will help the patient from any kind of, kind of error from, a, from any, it will help the patient to protect from any forms of error while performing this procedure okay then after assessing the patient you have to explain the procedure to the patient and provide privacy because you have to explain the patient regarding what are the indications for performing this procedure and what are the advantages of this procedure how the patient can cooperate with this procedure these things have have to be discussed with the patient before going to perform this procedure or else through that we can get the full cooperation from the patient. Okay, so proper explanation helps to win cooperation from patient during procedure. Then empty, measure, and record the amount and appearance of urine present in the drainage bag. Discard urine and drops. So before going to perform this bladder irrigation, you have to drain out or you have to remove the retained urine from, from the drainage bag. It can be performed by, by wearing the Clean gloves. After drainage, drain out the bag, you have to remove this. It's a very, very important procedure before going to perform urinary bladder irrigation. Because if you have a chair, you can remove the urine bag. If you have a bladder irrigation, you can remove the bladder irrigation. If you have a complete bladder irrigation, you can remove the solution. For the boy, watch out like boy in the month's like a bit too. I think the retention is something that is leading to another complication. Okay, then emptying the drainage pipe allows more accurate measurement of your output after the irrigation. So this step is very very important. You should not skip this step when you are performing this procedure. Then wash hands and wear gloves. To drain out the urine, you can wear the clean gloves. And after removing that clean house, clean gloves, you should you should wash your hands and wear the Gloves. It is mainly to prevent the transmission of infection. Okay. Then connect the irrigation infusion tubing to the irrigating solution and flush the tube with the solution and keep the tip sterile. So after cleaning uh, our hands and we are the sterile gloves, you should connect the irrigation infusion set 
to the irrigating solution and always keep in mind that the tip of the solution, tip of this infusion set should be considered as solid. You should not touch on the tip of this uh, set because it is already introduced into the patient's Unique catheter, a layer patient the body at the in the part of the room and the cross contact with the other because it can cause what infection. Okay, then before going to perform this blood application, we should make sure that this tubing is free from any form of air particles because flushing the tube now removes air and prevents it from being inserted into the blood. So, number of the air removes it, what will happen? This air can be transmit trans. Um, Traveled into the urinary bladder cavity. Okay, then till now this procedure is same for both intermittent and continuous irrigation. The only difference is that how it is being irrigated. Okay, that is the only difference. the procedure is same as for both intermittent as well as continuous irrigation. Okay, so next, how we can perform the intermittent irrigation? Hmm? Open the flow clamp on the irrigating tubing. Allowing the specified amount of solution to infuse, clamp the tubing. For that, you have to assess the doctor's order or you have to check the doctor's order to so what kind or uh, how much ML needs to be delivered through this tubing to the patient's urinary bar. Okay, that is intermittent, right? continuous and but a fixed amount of fluid and volume are infuse it. So we have to Allow this specified amount of solution to infuse and come the tubing. A specified amount of tube, amount of infused sedimentation of the building tubing and clamp the chain. That is intermittent irrigation. This is very, very important. Right? Clamp the chain and then it will be continuously delivered to the tubing. Okay, sorry, uh, delivered to the urinary bladder. So, as is the drainage for amount, color, and clarity. And apply flow clamp. To the urinary drainage tubing, crossing the flow clamp allows the solution to be reached in the bladder and in contact with bladder. So, after delivering or irrigating this solution into the bladder, we should clamp this um, drainage tubing. That is clamp the chamber. We will put the solution continuous and we will put it in the doctor. 10 minutes or like 15 minutes or up to 30 minutes. The doctor will order and say, the urinary solution will be able to retain the urinary solution. That's why we will do it. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Into the drainage bag and that should be done. So after the dispatch time, you have to remove this or you have to drain out this urine. Okay. This is the procedure. How we can perform this intermediate blood. So this is the Catheter, catheter through which the unit catheter, catheter tip under the cellular by connections and another, then cell draws away with the best syringe which turn. We number use no under the very killer and down the plant butter. See the animal pistol remote of solution, the silicon or the slain and antibiotics are one. So, proper and down another penetration or the word connect to you. So, can't you reach it number clamp in the other? Clamp the chase the victim, release him partly. If you are not a doctor, you can attend the clamp the chase the victim, release him. This is the procedure how we can perform an intermittent procedure. Okay, then next is continuous irrigation. Continuous means from the name until we get an idea that what exactly it is. This means it's continuously we are delivering this solution. Adjust and open the flow clamp on the urinary drainage tubing as the drainage for amount of color anxiety. This allows the irrigating solution to flow out the bladder continuously. So, first, we clamp release irrigation continuous side to do flow with irrigating solution. Then, open the regulating clamp on the irrigating tubing and adjust the flow rate as prescribed by physician. This is the prescribed in the way that prescribed by mold. So, that is the answer to the clamp release the condition clamp close here. So, that is the condition. Irrigation. Okay, then empty the urinary drainage bag after recording. Continue changing the irrigating solution better. So, for the time of the irrigation, we will have bladder, bladder will have to be urine drain out here to continue the irrigation procedure. Document the procedure and results in the patient's record. So, our documentation are going to change the what kind of solution that is being used to deliver this irrigation and whether the patient was cooperative or not, or whether the patient had any forms of discomfort during this procedure. As well as we have to mention what kind of or what amount of urine has been 
removed or drained out after this procedure. So it, it will help you know that any forms of retention of urine after this procedure. Okay. Now the abnormal constituents in this blood clots pass or mucus clots to take as a reaction. Like the bleeding in below that blood clots of the window. And then the hemicture of the end. That's the man's like in the kitchen signs. Complications on the man's like in the sandwich. Okay. So this is the picture of how we can deal with the continuous irrigation. Uh, intermittent irrigation is the syringe use of the delivery channel. Continuous irrigation, we have to perform this using an IV stand. Okay, for IV stand, we have to do irrigation bag. We have to do irrigation bag and we have to do it. And we have to do a drip chamber. We have to do a drip chamber. We have to do a drip chamber. We have to do a tamper. We have to do a tamper. Automatically, the distributions will be Irrigated to the bladder. Okay. Other point is to fill in the tissue by the hand. So, and the chain is drainage by the hand. So, you will get the tissue at the connection drainage by the hand. You will drain out the tissue. Okay. So, this is the picture of continuous irrigation. So, in this session, we had dealt regarding what is that of irrigation. It is just uh, it is nothing but it's just we are trying to irrigate or wash out the uh, urinary cavity using a stream of fluid. Okay, so whether uh, for that either you can take normal saline or you can take any form of antibiotics as per the doctor's order. And the blood irrigations are divided into two forms that is intermittent and continuous, and we had seen that how it uh, perform uh, the performance as well as the necessary responsibility that we have. Uh, discussed in this unit. Okay, so please go through this note and if you have any doubt, you can ask. Okay, thank you.